in the woods ain't where you'll find me Taking Holly to the Green Mill You know it, Lone Wolf Show. And as usual, we have a very special guest, a musician at that. Uh, goes by the name of Buffalo James Dolan in the house. How are you doing? Oh. How are you doing now? I am wonderful. Your music so, is great. I heard that you're going to be performing at Starwood. How much of this is true? It's true. Yeah. That's cool. Gonna... Very cool. Yeah. Performing two shows that. Two shows. So where are you from? Originally from Long Island, New York. Uh, I've been a traveler for a few years, but uh, yeah, finding roots. So uh, Staten Island, you said. Long, Long, Island. Long Island. Island. Long Island, New York. Uh, originally, so you're from the city, but you're a traveler. Where you been? Oh, well, I've been up and down the East Coast. I traveled to Oregon and California in 2017 through 18, 19. Uh, I've been to Europe a few times. Um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know, next step's Kentucky, even though I'm here right now. <laughs> so you're a pagan musician. How long have you been playing music? Oh, since I was a little kid. I uh, I got fascinated with the trombone when I was about six. And uh, I went to school for music. I, I attended for my bachelor's at George Mason University. Not that. Uh, not that I'm like name dropping or anything. Not really name dropping. Uh, yeah, I've been playing since I was seven. I'm, I'm, I play about a dozen instruments right now. Except so you my play, favorite. You play about a dozen instruments. Do you have any instruments with you? I did you do with me today? I'm actually on a traveling route right now, so it's a little challenging to bring a forty pound accordion. But uh, yeah, I got my didgeridoo. Anybody who doesn't know, you know, it's an instrument from Australia. So it it's, comes it's, from Australia. I don't know if you can see, but it's a hollow tube. Mm -hmm. And uh, you blow into it. Sample. So do you make them? I do. Yeah, I've... Uh, Got bamboo ones, and I've got a few really choice hardwood ones curing right now. I've got a, I have one made out of Eastern U, and uh, I got a couple locust ones, nice and straight. Let's see, I got PVC ones. Got a bunch. I think I got six PVC ones. Yeah. How, so, what's the process of making one? Well, I think it depends on the material that you make it out of. I, I started off on bamboo, which is an invasive that's actually, you, it's if, if you're chopping it down, you're actually doing people a favor. Um, I'll take a pipe, uh, and you, you kind of, you would wedge off a section of the pipe so that you have a scraper that you can push down the bamboo, and it pops out those hollow intersections, like every, I don't know, six inches or so, there's like a flat level, and then you got to pop through that, and keep going until you got a hollow tube. And then when you have the mouthpiece, it depends on the material, how you make it. Uh, some didgeridoos, you can make them so that they don't really hurt when you put them on your face. Uh, but a lot of people use beeswax. I use hot glue because it's cheaper. Um, and it doesn't really melt. If you're playing the didgeridoo for an hour or so on a show, the wax mouthpieces will actually melt. So you end up with beeswax all over your face and when you have a beard that's uncomfortable so yeah i have i noticed that hot glue is a little better for the mouthpiece um different didgeridoos are different the hardwood ones are a little trickier you have to cut them in half with a, like a bandsaw or a table saw if you have it and then you hollow them out and you put them back together with wood glue um most people don't have access to a drill press that's big enough to drill through a six foot tube. So that's the standard method. Um, just scrape out the inside and then put it back together. 
Hey, would you put didgeridoo players and uh, throat singers in the same category? Oh, that's a tricky question. Uh, they're very similar. I have a friend, and we, we play the two of them together. He does his throat singing, which I haven't quite mastered yet, to my didgeridoo playing. I would say one thing that the didgeridoo can I don't know if they're in the same category, but they sound really similar, you know? Um, you can't really lay beats on a uh, on throat singing. Like with the didgeridoo, I could sit down and I could just lay a fat beat if I want, and it's pretty hard to do with the, with the you know, with your mouth. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I guess they would know you were coming if you had a didgeridoo. How how long is it? Is it big, big as you? Is it set up? This one's pretty short. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty short. It's, uh, this one's probably about four foot six. Uh, I'm about five foot eight. Uh, I got a didgeridoo that's five foot. I got a didgeridoo that's six foot. I got a didgeridoo that is eight feet long, and I'm a little annoyed with it because I live in a trailer and it's a little hard to move. Uh, you know, they make these didgeridoos that are just like two by sixes clamped together, and people drill holes through them. So you've got like you know, five feet of tubing inside two two by sixes stacked on top of each other this big. So there's a lot of designs for these things. Mm -hmm. So your mm -hmm. name's Buffalo James. You're going to be performing at Starwood uh, in July in Ohio, um, along with the uh, IP, IPMA Awards uh, ceremony, um, hanging out in the circuit. Um, where you're from, uh, Long Island, New York. Uh, what's your spiritual tradition? Oh, uh, well, I would say I, I got my, my practice started with uh, ADF, Andre Octavine. Um, I have a lot of reverence for the way that they run things. Uh, I wouldn't say that I, I strictly fall in their category, but I attend their eight, my local protogroves eight high days. And I help organize them and write rituals for them because I'm very familiar. I've been a member for eight years or something. Um, and I would say that's my home group, but it, I think I, like you, Harold, are a seeker of finding my own personal path. And it's an ever-going process. So that's why I created my Buffalo Spirit Gathering because... Uh, I think pagans in general, from what I've read, there's not a lot of consensus what everybody believes. There's a lot of different beliefs. Um, and I think they're all equally valid. And I think certain ones just work with certain people more. Mm -hmm. Paganism sure is a big umbrella, is it not? <laughs> yeah. So bu yeah. Buffalo Spirit Gathering... Is that a, like a, a festival or a gathering that you facilitate, that, that you go to? What's, tell me more about that. Well, Buffalo Spirit Gatherings, the name of, it's the name of an idea and of a movement. I use it as the name for, it's basically what it's about. It's about sustainable relationship with all beings. It's about not taking more than you need and giving when you don't when it does not harm you, fairly take and fairly give. Uh, a good word, word for that is uh, the Proto-Indo-European word gosti, or gostus, which translates, uh, you got to jump a few languages ahead, but it's, it's guest and host, the relationship between two people. Um, I, th I think I'm running a little bit off, off the question, but it's, I was very inspired by the, the Buffalo tribes in Yellowstone. I spent some time there working with a couple different activist groups, helping the, the buffalo that are in Yellowstone that are a, a rare breed that have not had their genetics cross, crossed with cows. Um, I was very inspired by the way that these people lived, the people that supported them. They, even though they were struggling in many ways, they, they loved each other and they loved the buffalo and they loved all the animals. 
So, uh, mm -hmm. Buffalo Spirit Gathering is really, uh, it's an idea, it's a movement about sustainable relationship with other people, expression, non judgmentality, or at least not acting on your judgments, right? We can't really not be judgmental because we have our own way of looking at things, but, uh, about live and let live, I think. So these particular buffalo, they are organic. They've been, they haven't been uh, touched with any like hormones or like different stuff to alter. They're natural, natural buffalo still yes. exist yes. In, in America. What, what other, what other organic or natural, you know, habitat do you think is on the verge of extinction? Verge of extinction. Wow. Um, this, there, there are actually plenty. The, uh, another specific case is the wolverines. The wolverines have become tremendously rare because of destruction to their habitat. Um, and another very interesting one is, uh, is elk. Um, a big part of my path has been, uh, conservation. I think that a lot of the reasons why many animals are threatened especially animals and plants they're threatened because humans encroach or try to take dominion over animals and plants and it affects their well-being and then uh, wolves the <laughs> wolves they, especially man right so humanity constantly tries to fix what they've already done to uh, the, the the natural world it's it's about accurate, but it's it's even gotten to the point where it's as compli it's it's complicated, you know? Like we're we're in a world where the bees need our help. If the bees fall if we don't have bees anymore, life on earth will cease to exist. And we humans, I think we play an important role in helping bee populations. Because we all know they're in a decline because of pollution. So uh, it's it's a tricky thing, right? You can't let everything, at least we humans have messed up the world in a lot of ways that we can't really take back now. So, uh, you're, so, a, so you're a pagan from New York. Um, you definitely have a vision that has to do with the environment. Sounds like you love the environment. A lot of pagans do love the environment. Um, you're, you're also a pagan musician on that note. What can we do individually, you think, for the environment as pagans? Well, I that's mean, a very... I, I mean, Monica and I recycle. I mean, we do that. Well, we, we won't throw cigarette butts on the ground. We always make sure they're in the right receptacles and, uh, you know, that stuff. We support the whales. You know, we love nature. Uh, what can we actually do, you think? Do you, does it does does your love for or reverence for nature ever uh, cross pollinate with your music as a pagan musician? Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually wrote my song "Buffalo Rome." Okay, so that's in, because lyrical content. Buffalo Rome. Yeah, Buffalo Rome. Brilliant. It's a. Uh, I try to keep things not to. Uh, do me because it you know people don't like it when you're just like yo the whole world is screwed up but i wrote this song uh, about the humans interaction with the buffalo at one point there were millions if possibly billions of them roaming across this country and in the 1800s we we humans we we killed most of them so uh i wrote that song about the history of it, about the history of humans' relations with Buffalo, both in the past and current. Where can we find that song? Well, you can go on my website. It's buffalospiritgathering.com. And under the side link, you have music. It will direct you to my Google Drive. All my music is available for people to listen to and download if they like uh, and share. I also have a band camp under my name, Buffalo Spirit Gathering, where my music is also posted. Um, Buffalo, Buffalo Rome is, is on there. Instagram so. as well, right? Yeah, Instagram. My handle is Buffalo Spirit Gathering. 
And would you say that your totem animal is a buffalo? I'd like to think so. What do you think the pros and cons are of such a totem of as the buffalo? And does well, that, does, that, does that describe your character as well? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm I'm a little uh, a little stubborn, and I think like the buffalo people who are willing to give up certain conveniences for the benefit of the world around them are also somewhat rare. But there was a time when humans lived much more sustainably with all the beings. So uh, I think this goes back to your prior, back to your prior question. What, what can people do? Uh, I say really the trick is research, research, research people. Um, like you use the example of recycling, right? Recycling is definitely a step up from smashing your glass against your door and just yeah. leaving it. There. And it's yeah. definitely a step up from leaving it in your lawn. Um, but one thing people fail to take into account with ne not just recycling, many other things is the costs of actually doing that thing. Like recycling takes a tremendous amount of, energy in order to convert these things over to what the other thing they need to be like i was just reading that if you have one greasy pizza box in your cardboard recycling they'll throw away the entire dumpster full so uh and i don't think that, that there's really any like clear cut answers to a lot of this um i'll use my cardboard in my gardening in my permaculture it's good for keeping weeds down and it eventually goes back into the earth. And one of those things that I researched inks that are on the cardboard are now made of soy. So they're biodegradable. Um, but, uh, the no till cardboard garden way. It's the way I like to garden also. <laughs> oh yeah. That's great. Oh man. I saw you had, you had, uh, posts about your garden. Yeah, I don't Garden. have one this year, but hopefully next year there'll be one in the works. Yeah, it's so tremendously satisfying. Like, just seeing this grow from the earth. Yeah, it's it amazing. can be done anywhere. I um, purchased the book, uh, The Urban Homesteader, and it was all about permaculture on, you can take a, you know, a house in the yard around it and turn it into your food force. And I did that in Kansas when I bought a house. So it can be done. <laughs> Kansas. Yes. Wow. You mean it's not all dusty out there? Is actual yeah. ground? There not is. If you, use, if you use cardboard to keep the water in and the weeds, you know, out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how about after Starwood? Are you going to be doing any festivals or are you going to be performing anywhere particularly? I mean, what are your goals at, at the end of the wheel? Well, uh, this is my biggest show as of yet. I, I have a show that I'm playing before Starwood, but I am currently not booked that far out past Starwood. I... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not booked that far out past Starwood. I'm playing the local. The, it's a Beltane festival, but it was. It's the belt. It's the Long Island Beltane festival because at on actual Beltane we had 50 mile an hour winds and thunder, so uh, they moved it back to July. I'm I'm headlining that one. Woo! And uh, playing for the ritual, and uh, yeah, I try to keep things interesting. My life is very uh, transitional right. So you, you said you went to a Beltane ritual in New York, and there was fifty miles an hour winds, and they can't and it canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was set up to play that show. It was uh, back in May. Did it open up some doors to something later on? It has, yeah, yeah. I would say that's actually the the door that's been opened. I've been going to the Beltane for a few years. And I've been doing my service to the group, helping set up and 
helping run the the ritual. ADF does the rituals very often because it's a very respectable ritual frame that's open circle and people can come and go and it's good for big things. So I think that the ability to perform these is the result of maybe a little bit of luck and some service. Uh, I'm, I think one of my challenges is that I'm not extremely social media savvy. I, I would prefer to live my life without it, but it's a world that we're in right now. So, uh, Yeah, that's one of the buffalo weaknesses. Yeah, that's so one of the buffalo weaknesses. I'd rather be outside all day digging than sit sit on the on the computer. I mean, if you know, I mean, with inflation happening and everything else, you know, with, with things that are happening, we may be only, you know, resorting to our own accord of you know planting and and sowing and you know and, and making our own vegetables and and hunting. You know, I mean. We can all we can barely get you know baby formula uh, for the for the infants in uh, United States, you know. So like, it, it sounds like. I mean, would you rather be in the woods? Yes, but not alone. Right. Like a buffalo, my tribe is very important to me. Yeah, tribe is definitely important. Yeah, just so think that of just... that. You know, thirty or forty buffalo in a tribe, like. Here comes the buffalo. Okay, everybody go to the sides and let them pass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there's definitely strength to the buffalo. Um, uh, and I agree. Um, very spiritual animal. Yeah, very spiritual animal. And I think, and I believe that the native tribes, uh, or some in individually, pay a lot of homage to the buffalo. Um, and it's, it's a shame that, you know, that particular. Uh, you know uh, the buffalo that you're talking about the organic that has never been cross pollinated with i think i think you said cows that that never happened um i think that's you that's something that i learned today like you know that's where'd you say what state they were doing that with the last it's in, word in, it's in uh, montana. montana but up, so up in canada they have a small population too hmm. yeah because i've been to montana it's uh, almost it's almost dry there too. A lot of a lot of dust. A lot of coal mines out there, Montana. Yeah. yeah. A lot of coal mines and so what do you do for fun? Do you, do you is music your your pride and joy? Do you have other hobbies at all? Um I spend a lot of time working on my and other people's gardens. Right. Uh I make musical instruments. I I, I like hunting. And shooting sports, those are pretty fun for me. Um, <laughs> I bought like a hundred fifty dollar BB gun last year, and I think I might have put like a hundred thousand rounds through it because <laughs> I could shoot it in my backyard and it's nearly free. So, uh, um, see what else? I like traveling. Um, one of the things that makes me happiest is wild foods. Um, like I could reach my hand down right now and I could find half a dozen foods that you can eat. This is a uh, lance leaf plantain. It's absolutely delicious and also very good mosquito repellent. Mm -hmm. Not repellent. Uh, like if you get bit by a mosquito, this will get rid of the bite. It'll make it go away. So that's an interesting uh, topic, you know. So you can just literally walk into the woods and you know, chew it up just, first, like you're doing. Hey, hey, that looks good. Hey, that looks good. Uh, you know, you might have got stung by a, a red hornet and you needed to put ointment on your arm or, you know. That's another good use for this plantain here. Plantain has been used to draw out all sorts of venoms. The native people used to use it to draw out snake venom. Um, I think it depends on how desperate I would be if I use that to draw out snake venom. Hope it works. <laughs> well, at least we know we're not going hungry at Starwood because we got <laughs> James. <laughs> we got James to make sure we have plenty of salad and and uh, all kinds of other stuff there. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, what do you think about? Have you looked at some of the specs as far as Starwood goes? They do have a map uh, that's accessible uh, on. Well, there you go. Social media again. They have a map of the the layout, uh, where everything's going to be. Um, they have uh, like a roster of who's going to be there. 
all kind of is there anybody there that you look forward to meeting up with oh well actually several um i've never met ian corrigan mm -hmm. i uh yeah i've uh, i've met john drum of adf and i've met kurt douglas uh kurt douglas kurt thomas kurt, Th kurt thomas i always mess up his last name um and uh there's belladonna laveau i'm looking forward to meeting her and uh wow um melissa has just labeled me all these people who are going and i'm like I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. I mean, shoot. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's just, I agree 100%. Star Wars is a star show, man. Pop stars everywhere. Absolutely. You never know who you're going to meet, too. Um, I've noticed that at, at some of the smaller festivals, you just people will pop up unannounced that you never knew that was going to be happening. So I can only imagine what kind of um, you know pop-ins you're going to see at Star Wars. So, yeah, what a great time we're going to have next month at Starwood. Um, and James James is going to be there, um, hopefully, with his dickery do. Uh, dickery do. Didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can blame it on my New England accent, I guess. Um, and I wasn't going to bring up that I'm from I'm from New England. But what's your favorite uh, sports team? Do you win the sports at all? Uh, I like to play more than I like to watch. I but it's uh the first time we've ever talked about sports on the Lone Wolf show. <laughs> so what See, sport do you enjoy playing? Oh, football is a lot of fun. Football. Yeah. Anything anything active really. I like running. I like any any kind of physical fitness. Uh my dad is he's a, a diehard Mets fan. Uh, we've been fans of the Mets since they were the Brooklyn Dodgers back in the like early 1900s. Um I don't really watch anything or keep up with it, um, yeah, I but I love I playing. Either. Yeah, <laughs> I love playing. Uh, I, agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I like to run. That's fun. Uh, so your bio said sh shamanic <laughs> services, soul retrieval, power totem, animal retrieval, land and energy clearing and ancestral work. Group workshops and meditations, will of the year rituals, and Galia Norse tradition. What all? What is all that? Do you teach shamanic shamanism? Do you do you facilitate a soul retrieval? Yeah, I uh, I have completed my core shamanism training one and two. Um. So and I I, I had. Uh, they say a lot of sh like sh shamanism is the kind of thing that's accessible to all people inherently. It's arguably the world's oldest spiritual practice. And I think it's something that's inherent in many humans. Uh, I just had, I had a, a vision where my first spirit guide came to me and, and told me basically, this is your path. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I got a couple certifications in that through different people. And, uh, yeah, I'm still young, you know, I'm not even 30. So I take on what I can take on and hopefully know somebody for the rest. Um, but, yeah, soul retrievals are relatively easy. Um, or easy, easy, it, it's all kind of about the same. Um, I, I, uh, I lead courses. Um, not advanced or anything, just kind of like intro to shamanism courses. Um, I, it looks like my website ed editor may have edited the, uh, the Galia Norse tradition. It's uh, like the, the Gallic Norse tradition. Um, I've had a lot of experiences with the Irish gods, the Gallic gods, and the Norse. Um, so I have, you know, I, I, I've, Melissa tells me that there's, there's traditions in all of them. Um, I think that we,
I think there's a lot of traditions. And uh, I think that the gods can come to people in their own ways. What's your definition of sham, uh, shamanism? Shamanism? Yeah, what is sh shamanism? Well, it's ritualistic use of trance in order to achieve a different mind state in which otherworldly beings are able to connect with you more clearly through symbolic guidance. I use my didgeridoo. I also have uh, a frame drum, much like yours, Monica, that I use. Uh, and the trick is, it's it's about a repetitive frequency. It's uh, right about bum 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 right about there, where it switches your brain over to a different way of doing things. Um, does that answer the question? Sure. Uh, all, so it's a form of alternative states of consciousness um, that puts you in a, in a frequency or state of mind to perhaps uh, have conversation with uh, unseen spiritual things. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'd say my my paths. Um, I before I had my sh shamanism vision. Um, I've seen the ancestors who have gone before since I was a small child. I've had uh, many experiences in my life that I'm not really capable of denying, uh, at least through my own perspective. So I, I think uh, ancestral work is a big thing with this, helping people speak to their ancestors, understand their ancestral patterns. You know, very often we... Uh, We say we're not going to be like our parents, but it requires introspection and knowledge of our parents' strengths and weaknesses in order to access our own shadows and end up in a way that truly authentically is not exactly like our parents. Right, in order to not repeat patterns that have been passed down through our family through generations and generations. What exactly is a shadow? The repressed, unconscious parts of ourselves that we don't want to look at. Very often, uh, uh, they show up in things that we say we're not. I'm not like my dad. I'm not greedy. I'm not pick your favorite i'm not um yeah yeah is oh, <laughs> do you think that the shadow is necessary yeah we have to look at it we have to learn to coexist with it which i think is an ongoing process I'm going to move this real quick because it has just started raining here. Sure, no problem at all. Can you Where see exactly, me now? What, what part of New York are you at? Are, are, you, are you currently at? Well, right now I'm in uh, Carter County, Kentucky. Oh, that's cool. I, I came out here because uh, vehicles are a lot cheaper and the transmission of my minivan recently went out. So I came back here to uh, get myself a new van, and I scored a great deal on a Ford van. So uh, on my way back, I visited uh, Miss Melissa Anderson, and here I am right now. I have not quite made the two-day trip back to New York. I, I, I see. So you get, you're going to be picking up a new van. Uh, is there going to be plenty of room for uh, instruments to go in the said van? Yeah, it's actually a great van. Um, show you a little i'll show you it it's up right down the hill there yeah there's my van nice. it's a biggie it tows my trailer and uh you can you can sleep in the back seat it's about as long as i am tall so that's that's good for me yeah it's a good van it's got good reliability ratings i guess that's what really matters right definitely we're looking 
to um, change to a van living ourselves. So see how mm. that goes. Uh, I've done a lot of different versions of that. Um, this is this is a uh, stay away from Chevy. Away from Chevy. <laughs> yeah. So many recalls. Yeah, but I'm, I tend to go towards the Toyotas or Hondas for vans, but I, I'm not sure about the Fords. I've had trucks, but not vans. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, I had a school bus. I had a van, and now I have um, a van to tow a trailer. I had a different kind of van. Um, I recommend trailers uh, for the simple fact, even small ones, like little ones, you put most of your stuff in the van and just get a little teardrop tow behind or something because uh, as much as we would like to pretend uh, mechanical issues are going to happen. So you don't want to be sleeping in a vehicle that needs to be worked on, right? You might have a couple days where you're not, don't have your house, right? Yeah. Um, and if, if you like, you know, if, if it doesn't bother you, you know, you can camp outside or whatever. But uh, I spent pretty much 2017, 2018, and the, like, 19... I spent a lot of it camping and uh, without a solid roof over my head. So it's uh, very, very important to make sure that you can keep out the rain and the cold, you know? Did you do any camping in Europe? No, I, no, I didn't. They, it's not as camper friendly out there. I see. I also didn't have my camper. So yeah. where, did, where, did you where did you trek to in, in Europe? So far, I've been to Munich, Germany. Um, for four hours. It wasn't a very long time. And I spent two weeks in Hungary. Yeah. And Austria. I wandered around, got to meet a bunch of cool people. My mother had this friend who was a tour guide for the hung Hungary. So she brought us a lot of really cool places and let us stay in her house and everything. It was a real, real great opportunity. But I'm looking forward to the opportunity to go back. I think I'd like to visit Ireland or Iceland next. Maybe both. Do you think that your perception towards the United States has changed since you visited Hunger, Hungary, you said? Hungary. Hungary, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. It has. Um, How so? Well, our healthcare system's really screwed up. There's no public transit. And people out here, as powerful as individualism can be, it can really raise some powerful people. There's a lot of people who do not make it through this individualistic way that Americans are in a way that works for them. Um, in Europe, I think people are at least more accustomed to living with other types of people and changing things because their borders are constantly changing and most of their countries are the size of our states. Um, and they, they run a lot of things differently. Um, I'd say the biggest one is, is the way people, I, I, or at least I perceive that people work are, are hospitable out there. There's a lot of people who are way more hospital, hospital, hospitable. So I want to talk more about your music. What do you think that your most successful or your most proud accomplishment is as far as songs go or tracks? What's your favorite song that you've ever written and performed or recorded for that matter? I If I'm going to have to put it at one, there's this song I wrote that's called Just Love. Um, it's a relatively simple piece it's, i think uh, i think it's got four chords and uh it's relatable it's funky it's catchy and uh it came to me in a dream so i was pretty proud of that yeah um i got a couple songs like the, the buffalo rome song was was a very emotional one it was very 
it was the result of an immediate experience. When when I was writing Buffalo Rome, I mean, I I was crying. There was uh, it was a great cathartic moment, and I think that the song itself highlights some of the uncompleted, unresolved issues with the Buffalo. Um, so I think we're gonna push Just Love back. Buffalo Rome's my my number one. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I certainly look forward to hearing more music from James Dolan, and we really appreciate you coming on the Lone Wolf Show. Is there any uh, thing that you would like to talk about? Uh, you know, the plug into um, Monica and I's audience, uh, like a place where we can find your music, or a website, an Instagram, a, a shout out, uh, or anything of that sort. Yeah, you know, I I, I uh, I've been off Facebook for several years, but I just started a new Facebook account. It's under Buffalo Spirit Gathering. It's an artist page. We also have my website, which is buffalospiritgathering.com. Who, definite, definite shout out to the person who designed my website, Rose Jacobs. She lives over in Oregon, and uh, she she did a really great job for a very reasonable price. And uh, she's a very patient person. I had a lot of questions and a lot of just a finickyness to it and she was she was very good at, at doing my website so i kind of i created the website because i had like six different pages that just encompassed like i'm a permaculture designer i have my etsy i make musical instruments i also make bows and arrows and other assorted things i have my uh my band musical project and uh the the religious organization aspect of it i mean i don't i don't have any like paperwork that says i'm a nonprofit or anything right now um and i have an instagram it's also buffalo spirit gathering that's it all right we you mind leading us out with that didgeridoo there yeah, yeah, I'll play a song. Thanks, man. Kick us a beat, man. <laughs> I look forward to hearing that at Star Wars. You hear that well? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to bang on this beer bottle. It's pretty much the only thing I can find right now. Give it up for James Dolan, everybody. You're going to see him live at Star Wars. This is the Lone Wolf Show. Thanks for stopping by, James. Nice meeting you. Thanks for interviewing me, guys. Lone Wolf Show. Yeah. With Harold and Monica. Lone Wolf Show.